There are a million good reasons why you should never get involved in the airline business and those are the million bits that make up the aeroplanes. For my next guest it may just be too late because Comair turning 70 years young this year. One of the most difficult airlines in the world in which to do business and while there's their celebrations the company is investing 10 billion rand to replace its current fleet of aircraft. Current recently took delivery of its 7th new Boeing 737-800 next generation aircraft. Of course talking Comair this is the Money Makers. I'm Bruce Whitfield. Tonight I'm joined by the Comair Chief Executive Eric Fenter. Talk about the industry, the many challenges facing it, and of course his company, Comair, 70 years in. I mean, it's amazing to think that Papa Novik, um, what, what's it, what was it? It was actually even uh, long before Dave Novik uh, I mean, before that Dave Comair Novik. started, yes. But these were World so War II pilots who came correct. back from the war looking for a job. Exactly. Basically unemployed. I mean, that's how you typically people get into aviation, because they're unemployed. You, you know, have to be it? desperate. You've got to be pretty desperate. <laughs> <laughs> but these were guys, I mean, SAA existed in its fledgling status, mm. um, but they saw an opportunity to connect the Bloemfonteins and the Kimberleys and the, the Georges, I suppose, of yeah, the day. Correct. And uh, from there it just grew. I mean, it didn't really grow in leaps and bounds until 1992 when the domestic uh, aviation uh, industry was deregulated. Prior to that, um, SAA basically had all the main routes and you could apply to operate any other route in the country. And so since 1992, uh, anyone who wants to come in can operate on any route domestically. And so since then, Comair has been growing. Um, we started in 94 with our own city jet brand, which some people might still remember. Yes. It was a green and red and white aeroplanes. And then uh, by 96, it became clear that we needed a, a more of a global brand with big frequent flyer program yeah. and all that good stuff. So we signed a BA franchise. And they took at that point a 15% stake and they've maintained relatively well, they that, actually, that level. It was only when we listed in 98 on the JSE that uh, British Airways took a stake. So it was actually post the franchise that they took a stake, mm -hmm. and they've been sitting at around 10, 11 percent um, okay. shareholding. I mean, and and that's, that's very nice to have the global brand, and it's yeah. very useful it's in terms well. of the, the global airline network. So that when a BA customer lands in South Africa, say at Joburg, or they've landed in Cape Town, they want to get to Joburg, yeah. they utilize the domestic routes. Exactly, and of course, all the issues like frequent flyer program, global distribution. Anyone selling BA around the world sells Comair as part of the BA global network. Uh, I think for particularly for foreign tourists coming to Africa, mm. um, and a lot of the time it's quite comforting to see a brand that they're familiar with, yeah. and that's been quite beneficial. And then, of course, in 2001, uh, we saw that uh, there was a bit of a threat of other uh, entries into the low-cost carrier market, so we launched the first low-cost carrier in South Africa, I mean, Kalula. And that is now 15 years old, which is also hard to believe. And that's incredible. I mean, I remember the early days of Kaluta, this idea of low-cost carriers. You had the... And on uh, the Mac internet. The McDonald on the internet, this new yeah. thing called the internet. McDonnell Douglas aircraft, noisy, yeah. a, a, a real issue when it came to fuel efficiency. Those have been phased yeah, out. The last gone. guys who were flying those were, were one time. Yes. They're gone now. Yeah. But you guys always talk about the new aircraft that you're mm. buying. I don't think I've ever been on one. I don't well, know where you hide Kalula, them. Kalula, th that's all that there is in Kalula now. Okay. Uh, they're all new on Kalula now. We've, we've actually got our second brand new 800 coming to the BA brand uh, in November. And then, mm. yeah, in a few years' time, we'll be on all on 737-800. But the, the, lo the logic of you, you charge people a lot more to travel on BA in the old aircraft, the Rattley mm. aircraft. I'm still very serviceable. <laughs> um, the, the Rattley aircraft. And then you, the guys who pay by the cheap seats, they get stuck onto the brand new aeroplanes. Well, What's the logic? Uh, interesting enough, the, the cost per seat on Kalula is still significantly lower than uh, on BA. But of course, the, the real um, formula there is just packing in more seats into yeah. a smaller space. So on BA, in terms of your, your, uh, the amount of square meterage that you mm. occupy, um, so the rate per square meter is actually very similar on BA and Kalula. Mm. Is the low-cost model still valid in a place like South Africa? We've had so many people come in and try to compete and mm. undercut and the price wars that have existed and the subsidies, the state subsidies to SAA and SAA constantly seems to be trying to undercut uh, itself at Mango uh, mm. and you guys at Kalula. It's, uh, it's quite volatile. Um, when we're in a good economic upturn in, 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 uh, when in last the cycle, was that? What's that, about four years ago, yeah. three, four years ago? Then, um, then typically we see good growth in the market mm. and you can actually achieve uh, volume growth and some airfare increases at the same time. And then the likes of Kalula does very well. But uh, as soon as you're in a situation like we are now with a uh, fairly weak economy and new entrants into that market, then everyone is really struggling to get the next passenger. Mm. And pricing gets incredibly aggressive. Um, yeah, and then typically the likes of uh, low-cost carriers all lose money. What's, that, what's happening to your load factors then? 
The loads are fairly mediocre still. Uh, we have seen a little bit of growth in the market recently just because of the kind of pricing in the market right now. Uh, we've got uh, Kalula, Mango and uh, Fly Sapphire all pursuing the next passenger. So the airfares have come down quite a lot. It has stimulated growth by about 8%, but we see that as unsustainable growth mm. because it's really on the kind of airfares that cannot be sustained in the long term without uh, carriers going out of business. You, 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 you've got to stay airborne, and if you're not flying, the airplane's costing you money. Because exactly. I think, uh, I asked you this question before, I think out of every 24 hours, your aircraft are airborne 13 hours in yeah, the We're about 11, day. 11 and a half hours of utilization, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and so that's, busy. A, that's a high level of utilization, mm. and it doesn't take much to go wrong uh, for the last flight of the day to be exactly. delayed by an hour. Exactly. So, you know, the utilization, particularly with the, the, the new aviation economy of, of mm. high fuel price and I know right now we say well the oil price is low but I think this is a sort of a temporary environment mm. um, so in preparation for our next climb in the oil price or exchange rate whichever comes first yeah. uh, you know we're constantly upgrading to newer aircraft so whereas historically it was quite easy to get into the industry because you just lease some very old aeroplanes your capital cost was a concern you weren't worried about operating costs so much now it's turned around completely and now you spend enormous amounts of capital just to get the more efficient aircraft because it's essential to get that cost mm. of fuel burn down. And so, um, yeah, big investment into, into new aircraft, but you just cannot operate with older aircraft anymore. It just, uh, it just blows you out the water on your fuel cost. The, the politics of airlines are always interesting. You mm. guys managed to delay the launch of Fly Saf Air in a dispute over shareholding. They've come right back at you saying, hold on a second, uh, you use the global shareholding restrictions on South African registered airlines to delay us. And they've thrown a spanner in your works. They're saying that you go over the 25% the minimum mm. Minimum uh, or maximum foreign shareholder BA, as you've told us, got ten or eleven yes. percent. But there, there's a smattering of other international shareholders too. Look, it's it's a it's actually quite a different argument to the issue we had. Um, the issue we had was an actual misrepresentation of the shareholding. Um, in our case, they're saying no one should apply see-through principle. And interesting enough, um, you know, one of the the, the uh, components of this is that they say, well, the shares of the investors in Alan Gray are held by Mr. Alan Gray in the Bahamas. Uh -huh. You see, and Mr. Alan Gray in the Bahamas is a foreigner, and therefore Alan Gray's of, mm. of shares are, are foreign shares. You know. So it's all rather amusing in a way. Um, so you're not, you're not at all concerned no, about no, the, the no, prospect I, I of the Civil Aviation Authority pulling a license from No, you. no. Both on, the, um, on, the, on the, 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 the contents of the complaint and on the actual procedure that's been followed, um, we think there's been a huge failure on both of those accounts. So we're waiting for a date to have this whole um, question uh, reviewed in court, but it you know, could take nine months, it could take two years, whenever we can get a, a date in court. Now, we're seeing, interestingly enough, there are competitors, and we've seen competitors come and go on the very busy Cape Town Joburg route, and that's been highly contested, and mm. we've seen lots of competitors fall by the wayside over time. But the old routes, the, the, the core of what Comair used to do, the Bloemfonteins, the Kimberleys, the, the Georges, are now being picked up by the likes of Sem Air and by the likes of Blue Crane, mm. run interestingly by a former CEO of SAA, Cesar Zimela, yes. um, using small format aircraft in the case of uh, Blue Crane they're using the the Brazilian made yes, Embraer, Embraer. Um, smaller 50 seaters yeah. is that not a market for you why are you not in it's that a, space? It's a very very thin market um, and that's the reason why you find such small mm. aircraft on those routes and typically it's been divided up rather neatly between Air Link and SA Express um, those routes can't carry more than one operator um, because already you typically find the loads are very th are very thin even on small aircraft now you put a second carrier on there and it just kills the route. Mm. So we'll see, uh, you know, the, the likes of Semer have done some interesting stuff on, on routes like Margate and Plettenberg Bay where no one was actually mm. flying at all. Uh, Blue Crane is going more onto the existing routes, uh, Saks routes, etc., which is going to be interesting to see how they survive there. It, it's really a question also of how long SAA survives in its current format. Um, we haven't had results out of SAA, what, for 18 months? I don't know. Yeah, you'll well, you'll be counting more closely than I. They're now about 10 months over their, their late, their last due date, so we're still waiting for 2014 results. It's extraordinary. Uh, I mean, how do you compete? Isn't there not a Competition Commission complaint here to say, I mean, you've, you've tried, I think, mm. this before, but this is anti-competitive, surely. Yeah. Nobody's had, got any idea of who's been subsidized, where the subsidies are coming mm. from, and whether or not there is a competition. Look, in the EU, there's uh, very clear regulations around state subsidies of aviation and, and uh, you know, specifically disallowing it. But in South Africa, unfortunately, our competition law has a big gap when it comes to state funding mm. and state monopolies aren't covered at all in our competition law. So if you can pick a very specific aspect of competition law, like um, 
uh, abuse of dominance through payment of incentives to travel agents, for example. Or one could attempt something on, for example, uh, predatory pricing. Mm. But when you start going into many of these, these aspects, they're so complex in terms of the legal arguments, and they haven't been tested in South Africa before, that you could try and take it on, but you'd be a real guinea pig in yeah. trying to test the law. And you've got a business to run. And you've got a business to run. It takes, I mean, the mm. amount of money it takes to, to run these cases is astronomical. And then, like I said, you'd be the guinea pig in testing the theories. I, in 70 years, Comair has lost money in one six-month period. You've mm, never yes. made a full year loss. No, we haven't. Warren Buffett famously said if there'd been a capitalist at Kitty Hawk on the day the Wright brothers took off, they mm. would have shot down the Wright flyer and saved investors billions of dollars in wasted expenditure yeah. because so much money has been poured into airlines around the world. What has Comair done differently to what airlines around the world have failed to do over that same period of time? That's, uh, that's a very good question, one that we tend to ask ourselves quite often as well. How do we but do this? <laughs> how do we do this? Um, I think, I think one of the big issues has been that over the 70 years, we've actually only had four CEOs. And what we have seen in aviation is you definitely need a lot of uh, experience and, and uh, continuity in your strategy. Um, because of the fact you've got these long aircraft asset yeah. cycles, um, you really have to know what's been planned ahead and you have to follow through all the way. And so we've actually got a very long serving workforce, which is great because it, it keeps that continuity through yeah. the workforce. And when these kind of strange things pop up in economic cycles or fuel price or new competitors, etc., we've seen it all before and we know how to deal with it and we know what works and what doesn't work, etc. And you've also been insanely flexible. I mean, if a route doesn't work, you don't do yeah, it anymore. Absolutely. I no, mean, you've you got to be you ruthlessly commercial. Yeah. Um, there is no alternative because your margins are so small that if one route doesn't work, it'll wipe out your profits. What are you making, like 25 bucks a seat or something, profit on each route that yeah, you at fly? The moment we, at the moment, we're on around 25 rand a seat. In a good year, we made around 40 rand a seat. Eric Fenter, happy birthday. He Thank doesn't you. look a day over 65. The airline <laughs> is 70 years old this year. The Comair Chief Executive, Eric Fenter. More flying issues and more issues to do with margins, markets and investors who should sometimes know better next time on The Money Makers. But thank you very much for watching tonight. Till next time, bye-bye.